Okay, I know that none of us want to admit it, but spring is here, which means the dreadful word is finally upon us. Swarm season is here. So in order to make it so that your bees don't swarm this year, I'm gonna give you my best tips on how to prevent your hives from swarming. Let's go. So first, in order to prevent our bees from swarming, we first have to know what even signals our bees to swarm in the first place. And one of those main things, especially for springtime, is that main flow is about to be here and the bees have been pulling in lots and lots of pollen and building up their brood nest to prepare for that. Most of our bees like to swarm just before the main nectar flow starts. And this is because those swarms, they're gonna need nutrients in order to build up their colony since they're pretty much starting from absolutely nothing. Now, as I mentioned, because they've been pulling in all this pollen and they've been building up their brood nest, this is also a signal to swarming. When they're starting to get that, build, that brood nest very big and healthy, this is when they're like, hey, okay, this hive is great. It'd be okay if we left. And that's when they start preparing for a swarm when you have a ton of capped brood in that colony because your colony is not only about to double in size, it's about to triple in size. And they know that. And the whole entire purpose of a bee is to be able to swarm at some point because this is the way that they spread their genetics. And that is their end all goal, their whole entire reason for existing, to be able to spread their genetics. So as soon as they see an opening to be able to send out swarms, they're going to do so. But in order for them to do that, there are a couple qualifications. And one of those is, like I said, they have to have a food source coming in so that the new swarm is going to be successful. And two, the colony that they're leaving behind has to be very strong and built up well so that it also doesn't collapse when they end up leaving and three there has to be brood in that colony also showing promise of the bees that are about to be there so as soon as it hits springtime as long as you they have those three things they want to swarm especially if you have a colony that it's their second year their second season then they're probably going to end up swarming because yes we, we may perceive swarms as being a bad thing but for the bees this is a sign that they were really successful last year and they did perfectly in their overwintering and all of the buildup for this um, upcoming springtime so in all reality this is actually a good thing that you had a really healthy colony that was successful now let's talk about what are some of the signs that your bees are going to swarm now i'm not going to be able to open up these hives completely today as the, it is a little bit chilly today we got a little bit of a cold snap here in michigan it's around 50 degrees right now like 48 50 degrees and it's pretty windy and that wind is crisp so i'm just gonna pop the lid and show you guys what you can kind of tell by just opening the top of a hive and that you can tell if they're going to want to swarm so one of the main things that you're going to see is that when you open up one of these hives is that it is absolutely overflowing with bees. And when you see that, this tells you that this hive is very crowded. The fact that you have bees on every single frame across the entire colony and even up in the lid to the point that they're bubbling out that yes, there's a lot of bees in there. They're going to be pretty crowded and they're probably going to want to swarm because of that. If I can get this hive open, yeah, they're not going to be happy because it's kind of cold right now. But for the sake of the video, I got to show you an example. These bees, I swear, their propolis is insane. Oh my gosh. Hold on. Hold on a second. <laughs> okay, so this is a triple stack hive. Let me just pre uh, preface with that. So the fact that when you open up a colony and it's still covered in bees like this, this tells you, especially in the springtime, that these bees are definitely going to be looking at preparing for a swarm. Mm -hmm. um, so I will have to be splitting these down very, very soon. If I was to leave this hive with it looking like this across all three boxes, um, this hive would definitely be swarming. If not, it would have uh, queen cells preparing to swarm within the next two weeks, 100%. Um, especially because we've been having a really good maple flow right now here in Michigan. Um, and the dandelions just bloomed, so they're starting to get that flow, and everything else is really starting to come to life, so the main flow is about to hit. 
Now, the next way that you can tell that your bees are probably going to want to swarm very, very soon is when you open up your colony and not only do you see that there's a lot of bees covering, that there's pretty much bees on every single frame in that colony, but on top of that, when you start going through those frames and you start seeing that every single frame has capped brood on it, or at least half the hive is full of capped brood, this colony is really strong and they're definitely going to want to swarm soon because that is one of the things when you see caps brood like that your hive is about to double if not triple in size one frame of caps brood once that hatches will be the equivalent to two frames full of bees so that just kind of gives you a um a general outlook on how the hive is going to expand when you do see that. Now the next way that you can kind of tell that your bees are going to swarm soon is when you start looking at that comb and you start looking at the frames in your brood nest and you start to notice that they're back filling cells with nectar in the brood nest. This is going to be <laughs> something that's not going to make the queen or the bees happy because they want to push that queen to lay as much as possible. But if she doesn't have enough room to lay, they're going to start swarm preparations because they don't have enough room in the colony to keep expanding like they want to. Um, so they'll send out a swarm. So when you start seeing that nectar right there in the brood nest. Sometimes you'll see it right in between like um, in between brood cells, in between capped brood. This is them pulling in that honey, that nectar and putting it right there and they have nowhere else to put it. And it's coming in so freaking fast that they don't have time to take it up or even if they are taking it up, it's being filled right back up just as fast as they're taking it up to the next box. So the main thing that you want to think about is you want to make sure that your brood nest has space. That is the main thing. I know a lot of people, you probably hear a lot of beekeepers say that, okay, if you want to prevent your bees from swarming, you need to add on another box, which that does work. But the whole reason for this is because you're, you're hoping that they're able to clean up their space in their brood nest and move everything around so that they have more space for that queen to lay. So, okay, let's get into the juicy details of how you're going to prevent your bees from swarming then. So to kind of piggyback off of what I was just talking about, you want to add space to the brood nest for that queen to lay. So one thing you can do is you can take frames from the brood nest that have a uh, capped brood in it or even just a larva in it and you can move that up to the next box and instead move in either an empty frame that has to be drawn out or just move an empty comb into the brood nest so that they then have space for that queen to lay. I like to make use of something called checkerboarding and that is when you can put one frame um, in between, um, one frame, sorry, one frame that is not drawn out in between two brood frames. And the reason for this is bees do not like empty foundation right there in the center of their brood nest because it pretty much is like a separator. It splits the brood nest off and they want it to be all in one cluster. So what happens is when you just stick an empty frame right there, right in the brood nest, they draw it out so, so fast. Honestly, you blink and it's drawn out already and that queen's got eggs in it. Um, so that is a way you could add space to the brood nest. And you can also checkerboard more than just one frame. Um, I like to make use, especially when it starts hitting um, consistently above 50 degrees at nighttime. This is when I'll get a little bit more risky with my checkerboarding just because I know the bees are going to be able to keep that brood warm. So I don't really have to worry about that too much. And when that main nectar flow starts coming in, I like to even just do one empty frame, a brood frame, an empty frame, a brood frame, an empty frame, a brood, a brood frame. And like I said, they'll draw it out so, so fast. And at the same time, you're giving your bees space so that they don't want to swarm. So to give you a little bit of a visual representation of what I'm talking about when I say checkerboarding, um, I'm doing it in this colony right now because this colony is just crazy about drawing wax right now. So I decided to make use of that. So what you're doing is I have a honey frame out here, but you'd have an empty frame, a brood frame, an empty frame, a brood frame, brood frame, empty frame, brood frame, empty frame. That's the way I set up this box. Um, now you can do it a little bit different and you could even do just two empty frames and then a brood frame on both sides, empty frame, brood frame. I've even done that before. Um, either way, as long as you have some form of a flow coming in, they're going to draw out that comb. Um, and if you don't, then feed heavy, heavy sugar water and they'll also draw out that comb. 
Now, another trick is you can take from the rich and give to the poor. This is a method called equalizing and also helps your colonies to kind of like dim down the really strong ones that are kind of starting to get swarmy so that you are then strengthening your weaker colonies. And literally all you're doing is taking one to two brood frames out of your strong hive and putting it in a weak hive. That way, the, like I said, the one that was wanting to swarm, they're then weakened just a little bit, but then the weak hive that you have sitting over there is now strengthened and thriving. So a little hack there as well. Another way to prevent your bees from swarming, which I'm sure everybody's probably heard, is to make, also you can make a split off of that colony by taking a couple brood frames, taking some resources, and making an entirely new colony off of that hive. Now, for all of my Michigan peeps, I will say, I would suggest that if you do make a split off of a colony like this, always add a mated queen um, because our season is so short here for our flow. So just from my personal opinion and experience that I've seen, whenever I've done something called a walkaway split, meaning you just take frames and you let the bees make their own queen themselves. Um, at least for here in Michigan, I've always seen that they don't really get up to the strength that I need them to, to get to in order to one, pull off the flow and build up the colony and build up honey stores and two, be able to prepare for winter because um, they're not able to build up and bring in that honey that they need. So if you do end up doing going that route, I would suggest adding a mated queen if you do make a split. Now, another thing, if you remember me saying earlier in this video that if your colony is going on its second season, it is most likely to swarm. This is because the colony was very, very successful. Well, kind of piggybacking off of that is also keeping young queens in your colony is a way of preventing swarms. And that is because young queens don't really have that tendency to swarm. They don't really want to. They just came into this world. They're trying to prove themselves. So they're not really ought to, uh, to just like jump out of the hive and start reproducing and swarming like that they tend to want to stay in the colony now i'm not saying always there are a lot of young queens that do still swarm but generally young queens do not prefer to swarm so always keeping that queen young and fresh is also a way of helping and kind of playing off that a little bit my last tip is Honestly, genetics really matter, even in the realm of swarming. I've seen bees that even though they had the whole entire hive and they were just on a few frames, they still wanted to swarm. So it doesn't always have to be that the hive is really big or that it's, um, it's an older queen or anything like that. They can still swarm if their genetics kind of drive them towards that. Just some bees like to do it. And um, for all of my queen grafters off of there, one of the things that I kind of try to stick to now is I don't like to keep queens that came out of swarm cells. Now, sometimes, yes, I will take them because maybe I need a queen and there's a cell there av available. But if you really think about it, when you're always taking from swarm cells and making colonies out of that, you're also putting queens that have that driving force towards swarming in your in your colonies because they're already in that swarming mode when they were made. So that part of their genetics is being passed down. Um, so just something I kind of think about and try to avoid when making up my colonies and making up my yard. But I hope that was super helpful and I hope this information can help you prevent your bees from swarming because no beekeeper likes to lose their bees, but sometimes it happens to the best of us. So don't be too hard on yourself. But I hope you guys are having a great start to the year. I'm so happy to finally be diving headfirst into the bees. And yeah, so with that, I'll see you guys soon.